This is me 30 days ago. And this is me today. In this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly how I did it. Hey, what's up everybody? Nick Simmons here, two-time Olympian, but that was a lifetime ago. Today, I am a pro athlete once again, this time for Gymshark. But going through Gymshark's Instagram feed, I realize I don't quite fit the bill. These people are seriously fit, and after two years of retirement, I'm not quite so. I'm a little hairier, a little pastier, a little pudgier, and I'm excited to get back in shape. I'm gonna work my ass off over the next 30 days to do a total body transformation. I'm gonna consult the best nutritionists, the best trainers, the best sports psychologists in the world to do a radical 30-day transformation. And I, of course, gonna document it all here on YouTube for you guys. So it's May 1 right now. Let's set a baseline. I have this smart scale here that not only gives me body weight, it also gives me percentage body fat, BMI, water weight, bone density. I'll be able to use this to set a baseline and over the next 30 days, we'll see how much I've changed those numbers. Let's go set that baseline right now. Okay, so I'm a little embarrassed to say all this, but here we are. Today, on May 1st, I'm 178.6 pounds. 15.9% of that is body fat, 42.5% of that is muscle mass, 63.3% is water weight, and a BMI of about 25.6. I'm not unhealthy, um, but it's not exactly where I wanna be. Over the next 30 days, this is my goal. I want to put on six pounds of muscle mass and then lean down a couple pounds into my final weigh-in. If I do that, I should be bigger, especially up top, and also leaner, which I think is really important uh, when you go to take these photos and you want to look really fit. So that's my 30-day plan. It's about three weeks of bulking and a week of leaning. Let's go get started. All right, now to add insult to injury, gyms in my state of Oregon are still closed, but that doesn't mean you can't still get a great workout in. Now, this is my first workout and I don't have a coach right now. I'm really just kind of picking and choosing from things that I have lying around my garage, things that are convenient next to my house. Um, I'll be honest, I'm just freestyling this one. What am I doing? After 20 years of competitive running, I know how to run in circles and cut weight, but that's about it. I have no idea how to bulk. I have no idea how to put muscle on. Fortunately, I know someone who does. All right, and that man is Mr. Ryan Hall. Now, Ryan is a good friend of mine, and for years, he was America's number one marathoner. His personal best in the marathon of two hours, four minutes, and 58 seconds is mind-boggling, but wait, it gets better. What's also mind-boggling is the body transformation he has been undergoing. When Ryan Hall retired, he weighed about 130 pounds. Today, standing 5'10", he weighs 180 pounds, just about what I weigh, but he doesn't look like me. He is chiseled from marble, and I have to know how he did it. All right, Ryan, what's up, man? What's going on? You're looking good, dude. That picture, the transformation picture, just unreal. Like, you put on at least 50 pounds of really quality lean muscle. How'd you do it? Oh, man. Well, it's, it's taken a while. You know, I've been at it for four and a half years and just consistency. You know, you know, it's like with running. It's like, yeah, that'd be consistent. No days off. No excuses. Yeah. yeah, that's the key. Now, you talk to me a bit about the bulking and leaning down process, like how when you're bulking, you're taking in a ton of calories and you're not afraid to be a little soft knowing that you can ultimately lean down. What if you're kind of coming in a little soft? <laughs> <laughs> That's not ideal, Nick. <laughs> Shoot. Okay. <laughs> I'm be honest with you. Well, it, it, mainly it's a mental thing that has to shift. You got to be okay with like getting a little soft and you got to be able to tell yourself like, I am actually building muscle with this. Like, yes, like getting soft is part of the process, but it doesn't mean like everything that is coming on my body right now is fat. You know, you got to believe you're building muscle. Like the mental component is really real. And that's mm -hmm. something that's really important with lifting in general is they talk about how you're not lifting weights, you're making hard contractions. Mm. So like your goal when you're lifting is to contract your muscle as hard as you can to get as most out of it as you can. And if you're doing that, then the calories, the excess calories you're eating, they're gonna, most of them be going to your muscle, but not all of them, which is why we need to do little lean outs from time it, to time. It is, it is such an incredible mental shift to go from like right now, when I look at the scale, I wanna see a lower number. Right. And I'm scared if I see a higher number, 
and a whole mental shift of saying, no, I want to see that scale climbing. That means the work I'm doing, the calories I'm taking in, that they're going to the right place. It's, uh, it's going to take a little bit of time, at least, at least a couple <laughs> weeks for me to get used to that. Dude, totally. It took me a while, but now, yeah, I step on the scale and if that number's going down, I'm like, ah, oh, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. And now you tell me you lift for about 60 minutes to 90 a day or so. Yep. So I do a ton of volume. So I'm doing like the German high volume training method. So mm -hmm. I choose four exercises. I do 10 sets. The key is you got to take short rest. If you're in there, like, you know, messing around on your phone and uh, uh -oh. you know, taking two or three <laughs> minutes, like, you're going to be in the weight room forever. So the key yeah. is like, I have a watch. And so I'll hit lap split when I finish okay. my lift. And then I'm 45 seconds. I'm going again. It's a little bit harder to do if you're lifting super heavy, but if you're not lifting heavy, you can go on 45 seconds rest. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger said you recover 70% in 45 seconds. So I've always kind of stuck to that. Although when not, like I said, if I'm lifting super heavy deadlift, you just can't recover in 45 seconds. So um, yeah. I'm a little concerned that you're bringing the dedication of a marathoner into the weight room, you know, and I'm kind of a lazy 800 meter runner. So this could be tough for me. <laughs> and to each their own, you know, but uh, right, yeah. Ryan, you, what you've done is incredible. And uh, I'm going to take a lot of inspiration. I'm, I, I'm making sure all our listeners, all, everybody who's watching this video follows you on on the Instagram because the pictures are incredible. So I will also be sure to call you before my after picture when I start leaning down. Thank you so much for the advice. Yeah, dude, all the best on this. I'm stu super stoked to follow. Thanks, man. All right, to say that I'm nervous is an understatement. This is gonna be a ton of work, but here are the 10 exercises that I'll do every Monday through Friday for the month of May. Let's get started. All right, my strategy here is something I call today's strong is tomorrow's week. May 2nd, what I'm doing is 10 exercises, each one to failure. My strategy tomorrow will be to add at least one more rep. Today's strong is tomorrow's week. For those of you who've been following me on Instagram, you know I really believe in the mantra, no excuses. Gyms are closed, no problem. I'm lifting with just a couple weights here. I'm even using a $20 Walmart cooler for bench press. If you want to achieve your goals, there is really no excuse that should stand in your way. All right, that workout will probably get it done. It's hard to imagine doing that and adding on to it every day, Monday through Friday for the next 30 days. But all I have to think about is today. The workout I do today will help me tomorrow and that work will help me the next day. Remember, today's strong is tomorrow's week. If I keep that mindset the entire month, I know I'll make huge, huge gains, but I also know I need to get some protein in me right now, immediately after a workout. Let's go talk to another expert about how we can add protein into our post-workout recovery plan to really help us rebuild muscle. All right, next up is another friend. It's Sarah Hendershot. She was actually on the 2012 Olympic team with me. She's a world-class rower and she understands nutrition better than almost anyone. She's here to help me with my protein as I continue this 30-day full body transformation. Sarah, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Nick? I'm good, um, but I'm a fish out of water here. I know I need to add protein into my dietary plan while I'm bulking for three weeks and then cutting for a week. Um, but maybe you could just tell me which products you think would be ideal for me while I do that. Sure. Yeah. And really, when you're recovering is when you're making your gains, right? So nutrition is a huge part of that. While you are bulking, I think we should make sure that you are taking our strength recovery protein because that's got our really high quality protein in there with our enzyme blend, but then it also includes things like glutamine, creatine, and the carbs that you would need after a really hard strength session. On top of that, I actually would suggest that we add a little bit more creatine. So our strength recovery has five grams of creatine per serving, but we would put you up to 10 grams of creatine per serving spread out throughout the day. So one coming from your protein and one coming from our creatine. 
And then finally, I'd say every night you should be taking our momentous sleep product because sleep, you got to sleep. Sleep is when you're really repairing. And this product has a kind of magnesium in it that gets you into a deeper sleep. And it's during that deep wave sleep that your muscles are repairing. So that's going to be key for you to, you know, I always say sleep is my number one rule of training. Yeah, it's huge. It's really important. So I'd put you on those three while you're bulking. And then when you go to cut, we just want to be a little bit more conscious of calories. So we would put you on our essential reco uh, recovery protein, which is just our protein and the enzyme blend. It's lower calorie and it's no carbs. Um, focus on that. Keep the sleep up and you should be good to go. Love it. Awesome. Always good to connect with you. I will let you know how this goes. I'm nervous, but I'm also excited. Here we go. All right, and it's actually really easy to use Momentus because it's one of the few protein powders out there that tastes really good. I mix it with organic milk and it tastes a lot like a milkshake. I'm drinking three a day this month. We need to do something about this beard. All right, when you guys see bodybuilders, they're not typically walking around pasty with giant beards. There's a reason for that. Shaving, tanning, these things can help show definition. So I hate to do it, but I gotta say goodbye to the beard. All right, day 14 and it's getting hard. I mean, every day I'm throwing this stupid weight vest on. I'm jogging my mile warm up. I'm tired, you know, I, I love what Ryan said about taking short recovery, but it's everything I can do just to get through this workout. I'm, I'm taking lots of recovery. I'm still trying to build one rep on my previous best. And it's just after 14 days, it gets to be almost insurmountable. I, I'm really, really struggling. And not only am I struggling physically, I think I'm really struggling mentally. I'm a guy who loved to be part of a team, whether it was the cross country team or the track team or even my pro teams, the Oregon Track Club Elite or the Brooks Beast. I'm a guy who likes to work out with other people. The quarantine has really taken a toll on me mentally. I'll be honest, I'm really having a hard time getting up each day, going into my garage and cranking out this workout. Can we just quit this and go fishing already? Well, that wraps up week two and I'm tired. I feel like my joints hurt, my muscles hurt. I can't recover between workouts. I'm drinking three protein shakes a day and my weight's not going up at all. I feel like, I feel like what the hell am I doing? I've been here before, every single season I'd get myself into a hole and I'd have to climb my way out of it. Anytime I try something new, something difficult, there's what's called the Valley of Despair, and that's where I am right now. I lost motivation. The words that come to mind are over it. I'm over this, but I still have two weeks to go in my transformation. This is getting hard. I, I need help. And it's okay to say that, I need help. I'm going to call the man that I always call when I get to this position, my sports psychologist. Jeff Trosh. Jeff Trosh is a phenomenal sports psychologist and he's been helping me for over a decade. I met him at the start of my pro career and I can say unequivocally, I would not have been as successful as I was without Mr. Jeff Trosh. He drops what I call nuggets of wisdom on you left and right and I've carried these little nuggets of wisdom with me throughout my professional career, both on and off the track. Jeff, what's up? Hey, how you doing, Nick? I'm struggling, man. I mean, it's, it's tough for me because when I was running professionally, you know, I, I didn't struggle with motivation. I, I knew what I wanted. I wasn't afraid to work for it. But this, this transformation with the closures and everything, I'm just, I'm struggling with motivation. And I know a lot of my subscribers sometimes struggle with their own goals. You know, what do you tell an athlete when they're really struggling? Struggling with motivation specifically. With motivation specifically. Well, you know, it, it's interesting with this time, a weird time in human history because um, we can't maybe um, go for that uh, that run that we wanted, or the the the, uh, the marathon that we were hoping for, which was a week from now, or the half, which was in three weeks, which got canceled. So a lot of these things that typically inspire people um, as the, kind of the carrot that's dangling out in front of us to keep us inspired, a, a number of those things have faded away or gone away. And for some people, that having that immediate goal in front of them is is what really keeps them incentivized. Um, I, I've I've also 
felt strongly about helping people come from rather than the carrot that's out in front of them. It's like what's behind them, like pushing them towards wherever they want to go. So mm. where I'm going with this is like, what, what, what is your why? W H Y. Like yeah. what, what is, what is your why for wanting to train or wanting to achieve X, whatever, whatever you're uh, attempting to do. I, I think what, I think what demotivates people at times is we lose sight of why we're doing what we're doing. Is it, is it about a, is it about just getting fit? Is it about, you know, breaking some personal goal in terms of how fast I'm running? Is it, you know, something related to, you know, um, something competitive or non-competitive, whatever it is, but um, is, is it just for me to feel better? Is it just for me to maintain general fitness? I, I don't think there's necessarily a wrong why, but sometimes whys can be unhealthy. But for, <laughs> yeah. frankly, but, but for the most part, when it comes to something like fitness or something like training, um, having clarity of what my intention is and why my intention is that thing can be valuable. And the reason why the why is so important is because oftentimes we feel demotivated because it starts to feel like a have to instead of a want to. Yeah. And I feel like it's really important for people to appreciate. So as an example for me, uh, uh, you know, getting up this morning, do I prefer, do, so do I want to get up at 5.30 to go for a run or do I want to sleep for an extra hour? Well, in that moment, it's, it's a no brainer because right. I, I, I want to be asleep. But when I think about my why, it creates a bigger want. Mm -hmm. I have a bigger want of fitness. I have a bigger want of healthiness. And so it, while I may spin it like, oh, I have to get out of bed to, to go for a run, it actually is I really want to because I'm tying it to something bigger. If I don't have something to tie to it that's bigger, in this instance, maybe I don't have a race in front of me, then it, it almost has to be tied to a, to, a, to a why in order for me to get desire to continue to move forward. Yeah, I hear that. And and what about the like just the, the purebred competitors and their why is the love of competition? And that is, you know, for the foreseeable future been taken away from them. Would you encourage them to maybe reframe their why in a in a different way or maybe have a longer outlook for it? Yeah, I, I think so. I you know, I, I think the the one thing that I've been spinning, uh, frankly, with the with the athletes with whom I work has been what I know about the really competitive athletes with whom I work is when they get the go sign mm -hmm. when there's a green light they want to be as absolutely prepared as they can yeah. be on that day completely and so does that is that you know two weeks from now two months from now two years from now whatever you know we don't get to control when the green light comes yeah but when it comes you know i'm trying to help them stay incentivized through hey you know what you want is to be maximally prepared so that when it is green you're ready to you're ready to go and and with that always requires is that notion of get one day better every day yep. towards developing yourself as an athlete. So when the, when the opportunity uh, presents itself, you can be the competitor that you desire to be. hundred percent. One of the ways I like to phrase it to runners, and I use this in my own career, I want to give my future self the gift of being prepared. Cause when that gun goes off right before it goes off and I'm standing on that line, I'm either going to feel a surge of confidence for all the work that I did, or I'm going to feel a huge sense of panic knowing I'm unprepared. My goal today, today's Nick wants to give future Nick the gift of preparedness. I love that. I love that. And, and, and at the end of the day, um, some of us, I suppose, um, can work hard to delude ourselves into thinking we're prepared and then make excuses for why we didn't perform very well or whatever. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, you know, most of us, um, most of us are honest enough with ourselves that yeah. when, when our lack of preparation is exposed, that's, that's one of the worst feelings in sport. Yeah. It's one of the worst feelings in life. So at the end of the day, uh, we're, we're making, I, I, I look at it. I like the, I like your, the way that you said that a lot. And, and one way that I would also say a similar thing is some people talk about making these sacrifices yep. of getting up early and running. I don't necessarily love the word sacrifice. I, I, I prefer to see it as an investment. Yeah, so I like that. I, I'm investing in my future if yeah. by getting up early, by by pushing through this moment or whatever, and I'm making an investment in something in my future that's important to me, rather than I'm sacrificing these things. I feel like that's I feel I'm focusing more on what I'm losing, whereas as, as an investment, I see it more as what I'm gaining, which is again that support of the future Nick or the future Jeff at that starting line down the road. Works every time. This is why I call you, Jeff. You're the man. Thank you so it. much. All right, buddy. Good to see your face, man. Good to Keep see you in there. Thank right. you. Just when I thought I couldn't go on 
the governor of Oregon opened up our gyms and it was night and day for me. Whereas I was struggling to wake up, get out of bed and work out in my garage, I looked forward every single morning to coming into my gym. Something about having the workout written down for me, something about having people to work out with, having them cheer me on, high-fiving at the end of a workout. And I think when you see me do meetup videos, you can see just how much I truly enjoy interacting and competing with other people who love fitness. This channel is all about fun with fitness. And I'll tell you what, even though I'm grimacing, I'm having a ton of fun. And I'll be real honest, the reopening of gyms couldn't have come at a better time because now I'm in my last week and this is the lean phase for me. I've increased workload, increased cardio. Now CrossFit has taken place of my garage workout Monday through Friday. You're probably asking, well, what is he doing on the weekends? Saturdays, I always give myself active recovery. I like to go fishing. And I'm typically rowing one of those beautiful boats you saw in my garage about five to 10 miles. It's a great way to get active recovery in. And on Sundays, I like to go for a really long bike ride or a really long run. There's no better way to start the week than clearing your mind out in the beautiful countryside of Eugene, Oregon. All right, it's Saturday, May 30th, which is the end of my 30 day transformation challenge. I am equal parts excited and nervous because we have the final weigh-in, but we also are shooting the thumbnail and the after picture, which uh, I just hope that my hard work actually paid off. Let's weigh in and see what the numbers say. All right. After 30 days of hard work and smart nutrition, uh, I have lost a few pounds. I'm 176.3 pounds today with a body fat of 14.9%. My water weight, 63.7, and a BMI of 24.9. So breaking those down just at like a 10,000 foot level, I've lost weight, um, some of that was fat. I also seem to have put on some muscle. Um, so let's strip down and get some shots. You ready, Ryan? All right, here it is, and I'm really proud of the transformation that I was able to make. In just 30 days, I lost some body fat, I put on some muscle, but this is just the start for me. I really believe in a healthy lifestyle. And remember, a healthy lifestyle, a healthy weight, it looks different for different people. What works for me may not work for you, but continue to learn and continue to refine the best practices for your body type and your goals. Now, if you think I'm done, I'm just getting started. In June, I have some incredible challenges ahead. In fact, I'm proud to announce the Nick Simmons Track Classic. That's right, track races everywhere have been canceled and I'm sick and tired of it, so I'm gonna throw my own races. That's right, every Monday at 4 p.m. for the month of June, I will throw an event at South Eugene High School. Here's the rundown. On June 8th, we'll run the 100. On June 15th, we'll run the 400. On June 22nd, we'll run the mile. And on June 29th, to cap it all off, we'll run an all out 5K. I'm so excited to see you guys at the track. First 25 people to show up, get a lane, and I will be paying out $100 cash to the fastest male and fastest female participant. And I wouldn't be much of a YouTuber if I didn't film these races and throw them up on my YouTube. You can expect those videos at the end of each week. If you wanna see those events, make sure you press the subscribe button. Make sure you turn on notifications. I can't wait to see you guys out at the track.